Hey, guess what? I don't have the SD card. <laughs> I'll be right back. Good job, Mike. <laughs> You are live with Get Connected. Mike Agarbo here. I've got a couple nerds with me today. You know them, AJ Vickery and John <laughs> Beeler. We've got a cool program. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this one. In the last half of the show, we're going to open up the Get Connected mailbag. We get all sorts of uh, requests in, uh, emails, Facebook messages, and we can only answer so many questions, but we wanted to pick some of the, the good ones and answer them on the air. Where like the ones that say, um, how do you be so good looking, Mike? <laughs> well, that I can tell you that doesn't hurt to get to get selected. Uh, and we will be talking about 8K. If you haven't got a 4K TV yet, don't worry. 8K is here. Yeah. Is there any content? Well, we'll find out. We've got Aaron Lawrence uh, on the line uh, coming up in a little while uh, to talk about 8K TVs. Are you ready for them? How much do they cost? Uh, she's from TechGadgetsCanada.com. It's it's super fascinating. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. Let's talk about uh, some of the tech news. This was really cool. Uh, the one thing that I hate about carry-on luggage is that you can only carry so much liquid. Yes. I think it's like 350 milliliters. Well, it's the worst thing because you because people love to bring bottles of water with them to drink all the time. And when you're traveling, I mean, you most people think about it, but yeah, often you forget. And then it's like, I, I just you got to dump it. I just hate that. If I want to bring deodorant, they don't sell it in the size that fits in the limit. It's always like a little bit more. So or sunscreen. Or sunscreen, yeah. It's yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. You're you know, right. If you want the aerosol spray sunscreen, good luck. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so they're working on technology. There's uh, 3D baggage scanners that uh, are being developed that could end liquid restrictions. These are kind of like the CT scanners used in hospitals. Uh, they're actually installing these right now in London's Heathrow Airport, if you've ever been there. Mm. I hate that airport. It's like chaos. <laughs> I've slept and I, at that airport. I and I always feel like my connecting gate is about 18 miles away. It takes like an hour to walk to it. But I found they're really tight on security there. I've gone through like two or three security checks on a connecting flight before uh, that they had to you know screen the baggage and everything. So these new CT scanners, the operators will actually be able to go in deep. Uh, with the imagery, rotate the images and actually check out the liquid as well to make sure that it is good liquid. I imagine that will also help people like me that have a bag full of tech and it's usually not very organized. It's just a pile of cables and yep. wires and stuff. Yep. And they're always like have to look and root through it to make sure that it's not actually a bomb. Yeah. And so I'd just have to correct myself. It's 100 milliliters right now is the biggest size you can right, take. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is like nothing. Right. Yeah. Remind me to stop traveling with John too now. <laughs> <laughs> so these uh, are going to be rolled out in Heathrow, and uh, I think that's the first one. But they're going to be rolled out in additional airports as well. Well, you know, I like I know this starts at airports, but you know, it's always super frustrating whenever you go to any sporting event or you go to any like you know sort of concert or whatever it is, and there's always that bottleneck of security. You got to take your keys out of your pocket. You do it. So I love that technology is evolving. So that you can just like move through these places, still be safe, you know, but 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 um, but be able to get through these like bottlenecks. But I guess those bottlenecks though are there because people are cheaper than scanners. Yes. So they well, have staff at a certain point. Yeah. yeah. Security staff, you know, having a bunch of staff to go through your bag versus having a scanner more in the sporting events yeah. and, and concerts, that type yeah. of thing. But it's changing though. It's on my point. Yeah. 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 Let's talk drones. Uh, they're always in the news because <laughs> they're. In, in flight paths and yeah, yeah. spying on you. Crashing. Well, there's some good good drones. Yeah. And so one company called Lucid, they've got a drone that will wash the outside of your home or office. So you got <laughs> you gotta check this thing out online. It's pretty funny. Uh Lucid it, drone uh house washer. You gotta you gotta Google this. It's this this giant drone and it's just carrying this garden hose. It's gonna take water fight. To the next level. To the next level. <laughs> I don't know how well this is going to clean the yeah. outside of a building. Yeah. They say it's uh, like a soft wash. They've yeah, it's got... not a pressure wash because that would blow the drone away. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. But it's just hilarious. Like yeah. they've they've obviously developed a clamp that can hold a garden hose. Yeah. And they've yeah. put it on a drone that's strong enough to hold the hose yeah. to a certain point. Like I can imagine it only goes up a few stories before yeah. the hose and the water coming in the hose gets too heavy. Right. So yeah. it's a cleaning solution. Uh, that it's spraying, it's a soft wash again. It's not pressure wash, but like, how long would that take? Right. And how good of a job would it do compared to actually putting up a ladder and going up and doing it with 
a proper pressure washer. So they say it can clean buildings up to 120 feet tall. That's about 10 to 12 stories tall. But they don't really say how much this thing, <laughs> this thing costs. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and if your drone goes down, yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it for the day. Yeah. And yeah. the poor people below. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, the world's biggest camera about to photograph the universe. This AJ? is pretty cool. Yeah. So the Department of Energy's Brookhaven National Lab uh, just finished construction on the 3.2 gigapixel sensor array for the world's largest camera. So this is kind of cool. So it's it's um, it's the most um, um, uh, sorry, it's the most, uh, it's got 3 billion pixels in it. So it's the most pixels that's ever been built into any camera before. Sorry, where is this? Uh, well, they're actually going to um, build it into a telescope, okay. uh, which is going to stare up at space. And um, it's going to be able to capture everything from, you know, you know, possible like life or, you know, whatever, other planets, amazing things. How much does this thing cost? Is well, it's not, I don't think it's a boat. The price <laughs> <laughs> you can't buy one mike you can't buy you can't buy it yeah. if you have to ask you yeah. can't yeah. you can't afford it but the, yeah. these gigapixel photos are really cool because they're so high definition you can basically keep zooming in and zooming in and zooming in and pan around and look around and, and probably presumably with this technology you be able to find stuff that we wouldn't have been able to find before yeah it's like the biggest ccd ever built yeah and ccd that's basically the sensor that takes yeah yeah, charged digital. couple device. Yeah. Yes. Interesting stuff. Yeah. We've got a great program coming up here. We will be chatting uh, with our good friend, Erin uh, Lawrence. She's with techgadgetscanada.com. And uh, she will be chatting all about uh, 8K. If you haven't got a 4K TV yet, don't worry. 8K is, is here. Uh, but we're also going to open up the mailbag. We're going to uh, take some of... Uh, some of the questions we get uh, through our Facebook uh, page and uh, email as well. So stay tuned for that. You're listening to Get Connected here on the Chorus Radio Network. Back after this. You are back with Get Connected. Mike, AJ, and John here. Uh, we're going to open up the Get Connected mailbag. We've uh, gotten a few emails and Facebook messages uh, looking for some tech support. Can't always get to everyone online. We apologize, but uh, we thought we'd pick some of the uh, the better ones. This is probably my favorite question here. This is from Patty McCormick. Hi there. I watch Mike all the time on Global. He's fantastic, funny, and very knowledgeable. <laughs> and that's it? <laughs> oh, there's a question. Oh, that's just a statement. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a question. I was recently in a car accident and want to get a dash cam. I'm hoping he can help me decide what is the best dash cam to buy without spending an insane amount of money and it's uh, being difficult to use. I would have I would have it installed professionally, so need no uh, concern about that. So what are some things, John, you think people should look for in a dash cam? So I, I have one and it actually has a, a feature I didn't even know existed at the time when I bought it. You actually have a camera that's facing forward out your windshield but then you actually have another camera in the back shooting out the back. So hmm. you get rid of it. That's a good point. Yeah. And yeah. what like how, a separate camera in the a back? Separate camera that yeah. plugs into the main unit. Yeah. Um, and you just run the wire through through your car. It's really easy to install. A lot of them have that now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what it does is it actually will record both images at the same time onto the memory card that's in the device. So you'll actually have two separate streams. I also use it because when I turn on my car, my the display shows up on in the car of the dash cam, I can use it as a basically a, a free backup camera because I can see right out the back of my car perfectly, even at a weird angle. So I can actually see if there's like a bike or a kid or something right behind me. Mm. So, um, but you also want to make sure that you get one that's at least HD capable, the higher the quality, the, be the better. And also you want a really wide angle lens to actually capture all of the different, you know, front side action that's happening in your in your vicinity of your car. Um, so there's some really interesting ones that have come on the market recently where they're actually integrated into a rear view mirror. So you just clip the rear view mirror, uh, you clip this onto your rear view mirror, it gives you a brand new rear view mirror that actually has a display built in and the cameras on the other side pointing out. And some of them are wired, some of them are wireless to the rear camera as well. Uh, some good models out there uh, that uh, have been recommended. Uh, Garmin Dash Cam uh, 55. Uh, I think that's you know a couple hundred bucks uh, on Amazon. Uh, Mio, that's spelled M-I-O. They make a number of good dash cams. So the MyView 
766 has been highly rated. Uh, Next Space Duo is another model uh, that uh, is highly rated uh, as well. So hopefully that uh, answers uh, your question. Uh, this is a good one here. This is from uh, Sally Stiff. And she says, I'm considering getting a Bose AM FM radio CD unit. Are Bose a good name and are their products worth the money? Any feedback would be appreciated. So we're... <laughs> well, you can't say anything bad about Bose. No, no they're you know? fantastic. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is that it's always been considered a very high quality and a great sounding speaker. Yeah. I, would I buy a Bose? Well, first of all, well, you're th those three things I don't listen to via the radio. Way. I do it through CD, online. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's it's a good question. If yeah. you are still listening to CDs, yes, it is excellent. Yeah. yeah. If you're still listening to radio, it is it is an excellent And unit. we hope you are. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but over what medium? Do you know right. like so for example, um one of the ways that I listen to radio that I think is fantastic is I listen to it over um an app through the um smart speakers in my house. Yes. Yeah. So so and because they're voice enabled, I I'm able to say, you know, Hey Google, start playing CKNW in the kitchen. Yeah, you know, and I do that through a Sonos speaker. Yes, a little Play One, which is about ninety nine bucks, um, and so and that and the subscription to that radio station is free. Yes, yeah. so that works really well. Yeah, so it's interesting because my mom and dad are not super techy, yeah. and they had a CD player slash radio for years and years. Yeah, and I wanted to get them into the the new age, and I bought them a Google Home. And this is a smart speaker that connects up to your Wi-Fi network. Yeah. And once you get it installed, uh, it's pretty pretty simple to get it installed. Uh, you can listen to all sorts of things. And mm -hmm. my parents love it. Yeah. My mom loves it. She uses it to listen to CKNW all the time. She just says, hey, Google, play CKNW 980. Yeah. And it just plays. Yeah. And you can also have it play music. Hey, uh, Google, play some Dean Martin and it will play a selection of Dean Martin songs. So if you get a music subscription on top of that, yes. with like Spotify, sure. which is one of the better ones out there, yeah. it's 10 bucks a month. Yeah. And so just think about it, you used to buy CDs for 20 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. So 10 bucks a month to access 25 million songs, it's not a bad deal. Yeah. So if you get that subscription, it takes that Google Home or Amazon Alexa device, they're excellent as well. Yeah. Uh, and then you can play anything, any song you could ever dream of, if you're, you know, feeling sad, you know, hey, Google, play some sad music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's unlimited. Something else that I recently discovered uh, with Prime Day, there was the big sale on Fire Sticks. Yeah. So these are little uh, devices you plug into your TV and it gives you access to Netflix and other things like that. Uh, and you can actually still use it as like a, a smart speaker on your TV. And we quickly discovered when we were installing this in my girlfriend's parents' place that they could play their favorite radio station from the UK through their TV and on the TV, it actually displays what songs being played and you know, oh, really? all that kind of stuff. And it's really quite cool. Um, and it's really inexpensive and you already have a TV probably with speakers that sound good enough. Uh, so for, you know, on sale, the fire stick is like $25. Uh, it's pretty hard to beat that. Yeah. The Google home, uh, and they make Google minis, uh, yeah. if you want something cheaper, but she's talking bows, right? So right. she yeah. wants something yeah. decent. Yeah. yeah that's a couple uh, hundred Google, bucks. Google also makes Google max which is a Google Home, but like this big beefy speaker. Mm -hmm. um, and so that'll give you the same type of sound that you might be looking for that a Bose would do. Yeah. Yeah. And so you might be a little apprehensive in trying out a smart speaker if you're still in the CD and radio world, but I'm telling you, it's a lot easier than you think and it will change your life. Yeah, if you're in the radio world, think about making this change. If you've got a lot of CDs, that Bose is not gonna let you down. No, you yeah. can't lose. We are uh, taking your questions here we've uh, opened up the get connected mailbox i got an interesting one here okay yeah uh this is from maria and she was asking just, just wait a second okay oh those are the killers yeah hmm. it just pierces everything ambulance that's what happens Remind when you record that, right you right beyond pardon yeah yeah when you record on these tastings yeah <laughs> it doesn't okay I've got an interesting one here. It's from Maria. Uh, also enjoys listening to the shows on CKNW on the weekend. Uh, learned a lot. Thank you, Maria. Um, Shouldn't see your name, though. <laughs> <laughs> she did not say my name. Uh, she wanted us to recommend a good um, ECG or EKG recording device that she can wear on her wrist. 
Um, and so that's a great question, you know, and uh, we, I know you guys uh, wear the um, Apple Watch and recently in Canada, the Apple Watch has actually enabled their um, EKG. So you can actually use that now. Yeah, to, Samsung has announced their uh, their new yeah. watch as well that has that same feature. Yeah, um, so those, and those are great solutions because especially Apple Watch, fantastic, it does so much more. Uh, but um, there's some other options out there and I was gonna recommend a quick one because uh, you know the company Withings? Yes. Yeah, so they actually have an EKG watch Okay. Uh, that you wear and uh, it's actually um, uh, very accurate excellent quality um, and, uh, and so that might be one to check out that might be a little bit different and maybe a little bit more cost effective than going into a full apple watch yeah there's also a uh, another one uh, that just requires a phone a smartphone and you can basically uh, use your thumbs on it to do an ekg as well yeah, I think I'll have to, I'll have live to, core, I think is the name live of core. It. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. the yeah. one live yeah. core. Yeah. And so, you know, if you don't want to wear the watch, that is an excellent one. I tried it on my dad and he's got uh, arterial fibrillation and it totally detected it, mm. which was uh, amazing. So again, that one is uh, from live core. And so if you don't want the watch, uh, you can get this here and basically use it on anyone. Yeah, and it's about 99 bucks. It, it's worth pointing out, though, having a smartwatch, there is some benefits to that over so these standalone devices because it's always monitoring if you're wearing the watch. That's true. Right. And Whereas, it, it's also keeping keeping a report on your smartphone that you can then show your doctor or your, your, your medical professional that you need to talk to about it. And some yeah. of them are even set up that you can actually email that directly to them from the app. But the thing with the uh, the watches uh, or the uh, the wearables that support, you know, taking an EKG, they're expensive. Yeah, you're you're over five hundred bucks. Yeah, because you, you yeah, have but to, not with the withings. That's right. the, yeah. the how much was that one? Uh, I have to look that one up, but I would think it's again in that sort of like under two hundred range. Yeah. yeah, so you also have to make sure that it's been certified to do that in Canada here as well. So some of these wearables haven't got that uh, Canadian approval yet. Apple just got it for their Apple Watch. I know the Live Core one uh, works uh, as well, so uh, that's not too bad uh, as well. Uh, another quick one here. A uh, gentleman uh, writes in about uh, losing some files uh, to get them undeleted. His name's uh, Jerry LePage. He says, how do I recover deleted files in a document folder for free? I'm 85 years old and can't afford to pay for a program. Yeah, because these things get expensive. Yes. Right? Uh, the, so the, the big thing when you, ha when, you, when you realize that you've deleted something you shouldn't have is don't do anything else on your computer until you solve this problem because... Uh, if you deleted it and you haven't emptied the trash, you can just recover it from the trash. But if you have emptied the trash, that file might still be recoverable. But if you're downloading movies or something like that, that could overwrite that space on the hard drive and prevent you from being able to recover that deleted file. Because when it's deleted, all it does is tells your computer, hey, forget about this file. But the file's still there uh, on your computer hard drive. So uh, there's a few that I would recommend having a look at uh, that might work for you. Uh, depending how many features you want, sometimes they'll want money. But if there's just like, if you just have some basic uh, files you want undeleted, a lot of times you can do it for free. Uh, number one out there is Recuva. I found this one worked really well. I actually ended up paying for the, the full version because I had thousands of files that were, <laughs> that were uh, lost. Uh, and again, that's spelled R-E-C-U-V-A. And, uh, you know, some other ones out there would be Wise Data Recovery, uh, Photo Rec, and that's spelled uh, Photo R-E-C. This is a common thing when people uh, accidentally format their memory cards in their cameras. Yes. So you can still recover those photos if you haven't used it to take more photos. Yeah, what's happening in the file system is that when you delete something, it basically um, still keeps the file, but it just puts uh, a little denote a denoter on that file name that uh, this place on the disk drive or whatever drive it's on, whether that's digital memory or hard drive, uh, you can use that now to store other stuff. So to your point, John, don't do anything else yep. because that file is still there and you might be able to recover it, yep. essentially. We're going to have to take a break. When we come back, we'll answer a few more of your calls from the mailbox or your questions from the mailbox back after this. You are back with Get Connected, Mike and John here. We still have a lot more to talk about. Uh, we will be covering 8K TVs shortly. 
Yes, I know you don't even have a 4K TV yet. So <laughs> why an 8K? Well, we'll tell you how much they are and what you can expect from them. Let's uh, go back into the Get Connected mailbag. We've had a lot of uh, questions come in. Can't always answer all of them, but we've picked uh, a few of our favorites. So John, I'm uh, going to jump here to Laura. She wrote into us saying, uh, I want to replace my 72-year-old husband's ancient Huawei phone with an iPhone, which he likes to have for emergency purposes and to watch the odd app and check the weather and send texts and email. He's a low-tech guy, just wants the basics. He's very familiar with Apple's platform as he uses his iPad a great deal. What iPhone model do you suggest he gets without spending a lot? Good question. Yeah, well, and there's lots of great deals right now too. Yeah. So whether you go for a brand new device or if you go for a refurbished device, uh, or even the used market. Yeah, I mean, phones have gotten up there. I mean, <laughs> like yeah. the iPhone XS's and, yeah. and what have you, you know, they can get up twelve, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400, depending what size you get. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like he doesn't need like the latest and, no. and greatest. I'm just even thinking uh, finding like an iPhone 7 or yeah, something. seven or eight. Yeah. Uh, I know recently uh, a few of the carriers have had some pretty good deals on the iPhone 8 because it's kind of like the last one that wasn't an iPhone 10 series. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we're approaching a new uh, iteration of the iPhone, iPhone 11, presumably. Um, and so they're going to be closed, uh, clearing out all the eights. And sevens are probably already gone. Um, but I know my girlfriend's parents, they got uh, an eight yeah. for like a couple hundred dollars. And they didn't have to change their plan. They just had to, you know, it was, it was a deal through Kudo. So yeah. uh, you basically just have to shop around. Uh, a lot of these places now, they'll have you get you a really good uh, deal on a, a, a sort of a little bit older phone uh, with probably a fairly minimal uh, uh, plan if you don't already have one. Yeah, iPhone 8 is probably a sweet spot right now. If you can find iPhone 7, those things are still fantastic and yeah. will do pretty well everything that your, your husband uh, wants to do. Uh, let's go back to the Get Connected mailbag. We're taking your tech questions here today. Some people have uh, written in uh, off of our website and uh, our Facebook uh, page. Uh, what else we got here? Another one. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Doris. She's watched uh, us many times on Global News and uh, needs help with her security system. She says, I have a problem with someone entering my home when I'm away. I have a security system and I set the alarm system on before I leave. However, the person must have an app on their phone or tablet that turns off my alarm so they can enter my home. They just search and pick up anything they want, whether it's food, tools, etc., and also do damage to my personal belongings. Because I'm a senior, I've talked to the police, but to no avail. I was wondering if you knew of an instrument or tool that could fix this so that they could not turn off my security system. I'd appreciate it if you have answers to my problem. So this is a tough one. I don't know exactly what type of security system this is. This might just be kind of the old-fashioned alarm system. Yeah. So someone knows your code. Yeah. Essentially. That's the only way they're getting in there without the alarm going off. Yeah, and if they have an app, it's probably because it's tied into your alarm system. Yeah. Uh, so whether it's an app or whether it's using the keypad in the actual alarm system in your house, uh, maybe you just need to change the code. So you'd have to contact your alarm company or whoever looks after the, yeah. the security there. Uh, if you've got uh, you know, a son or daughter or some grandkids, uh, maybe they could even set up a security cam that could be set up while you're out. To see who it is. To see what's happening there. Yeah. I mean, that's awful, but yeah. I mean, I find this interesting that someone would have your code and do this yeah. to you. Like, why would you keep coming in? It, ma it makes me wonder if it is a family member, maybe. You think? Well, you never know, right? It's hard to tell. And we don't have enough information to, to really know the answer, but um, it's definitely something that I think a lot of people struggle with, especially if you have family members that, are coming in and out of your life, that type of thing. Uh, so, you know, change your password or your passcode if you can, uh, and look at a security system. We like the Waze security system uh, cameras. They're really inexpensive and like $35 on Amazon. And you can plug it in and then you can watch remotely and get alerts when people come in. And uh, I actually, <laughs> I was watching a movie the other day and I have uh, my Alexa set up to notify me of any sounds that it hears that are you know, breaking glass, alarms, oh, those types good, of things. Yeah. I actually got a pop-up. I was watching Superman on the weekend and he was breaking some glass. Oh, and it worked. And it worked. I got yeah. a pop-up saying, weird sound alert. 
And so those are the kinds of things that you might be, able, you know, if you already have one of those devices, take a look at the security system settings in those particular devices because a lot of them are doing double, double duty now. Yeah. So the simple thing, change your password now. Yeah. Uh, your security code, whatever it is, and uh, get the alarm company to help you figure that out because something's going on there. Yeah. Uh, you might not be technical enough to put like Wi-Fi cameras right, uh, in, right. in your home. Uh, if not, if you've got family members that can help you, that would be uh, something good. Uh, another quick one here. We've got Jerry. How do I recover deleted files in a document folder for free? I'm uh, a senior and can't afford to pay for a program. It's a tough question. Yes. Because uh, it depends on how long ago you realized that you had deleted that file. Uh, these programs are only as good as how clean your hard drive is from the, the moment you realized. Because when you delete a file, it's basically just an index telling the computer where on the hard drive that file is located. Yes. And so the file's still technically there. It's just been sort of changed. It's uh, it's, it's not uh, in the catalog anymore. Right, yeah. right. So it's out of the catalog. Um, but as long as the catalog is still there and the file hasn't been overwritten in your hard drive space, then that could be potentially reclaimed. And, and, and So that is imperative. That is the best advice. If you've deleted something accidentally, Stop. Don't do any other stuff until you get a program to undelete. Literally use deleted. another computer or your phone to even search which tools to get because yes. even using your browser will generate traffic on your hard drive. Exactly. But storing stuff and that could potentially overwrite the thing. And this also applies to memory cards uh, from cameras. A lot of times people will format the card or delete the photos and they're like, oh, I wish I didn't delete that or format it. You can actually recover those things in most cases as long as you haven't overwritten them. So a few to check out. These are called freeware. Some of them try to get you to pay eventually uh, to use it more than one time or for advanced features. You, you got nothing to lose by trying these ones. Yeah. Uh, one I've had success with is called Recuva. Um, I did a really bad deletion, so <laughs> I actually paid for the full version and it actually worked really well. But uh, see if the free version will work for you. Uh, some other ones would be uh, Wise Data Recovery, PhotoRec. Uh, as well for recovering photos. Uh, free and delete uh, is another one uh, as well. And this applies on, on PC and Mac. Yeah. There's different tools for both. What I found on the Mac side, at least, is there's lots of freeware out there that'll tell you that it can recover this file and then you have to pay yes. to actually recover the file. But at least it gives you an idea of what it can recover. Yeah. So you're not buying it blindly and, try and hoping that it's going to work. When we come back, we're going to talk 8K TVs. Yes, they're coming. They're here. They're a little expensive. We'll uh, give you the lowdown. You're listening to Get Connected here on the Chorus Radio Network. Back after this. We're back with Get Connected. Mike Agarbo here. We've got John Beeler with me in studio today. Let's talk about TV. Have you got a 4K TV yet? Have you got one? I have a 4K TV. How many? Just one. one. I think I have two 4K TVs. Uh, still, not everything is in 4K yet. Nope. No. But when it is, it's glorious. What well, even makes... HD video look really good too. Do you have an 8K TV? Are I, you ready for that? I'm not quite ready. Do we have 8K content? No. <laughs> <laughs> but believe me, the manufacturers are making 8K TVs. On the line, we've got our good friend Aaron Lawrence from techgadgetscanada.com. You got to check her website out. It's pretty cool. Thanks for joining us, Aaron. Hi, Mike. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. So you actually put an 8K TV in your house, a Samsung 8K TV. I did. It is massive and it's very overwhelming, but in only the best way. I admire you because as a tech journalist, I love getting in TVs, but the problem is they typically want them back. Yes. And so yes. you bring in this giant thing the size of a Volkswagen and you got to take it out of the packaging, set it up, and then you only got it for a couple of weeks. And then you got to somehow try to figure out that stupid packaging again to send it back. <laughs> Then, that is actually the worst part about be, yes. about doing TV reviews is you can never get it back the way they sent it to you. So you've had a chance to actually try out this 8K TV. So John and I are just wondering why. Like, why <laughs> would you want one now? Because there's literally nothing that will play on this thing. Right. There's a couple of reasons why you would want to go 8K. So one is that as we keep you know, buying bigger and bigger TVs. We're doing that because the cost of the technology is coming down, um, both the size and the technology. So more and more of us want bigger and bigger TVs. As those TVs get bigger in our rooms, the resolution needs to improve or it's just going to look like 
garbage, essentially. So that's why the manufacturers keep pushing this resolution envelope to to get finer and finer detail, more pixels into the screen. So they're cramming, I think it's 33 million pixels into an 8K screen. And that basically means that you can have a screen that quite literally fills up you know, one wall of your room. And that's the setup that I've got it in here at my house. (laughs) It fills the wall and I can sit within, you know, three or four feet of it and not see a pixel, not see, you know, not have the picture look like it's breaking up or it's pixelated. And that's really amazing. That's especially good for gamers who want to get really absorbed in what they're doing. Um, It works great on those nature shows or those you know, the videos where it feels like you're flying over something, you really feel like you're part of the video picture. So one of the other things you guys brought up is the content. And that is definitely a concern for someone who's going to buy an 8K TV because yeah, more, nobody's really making anything in 8K right now. People, like you said, are barely making stuff in 4K. So Samsung recognizes that. And in this particular TV that I'm reviewing, um, which is their 8K QLED um, 2019 model, it's the Q900R, they've put in artificial intelligence upscaling. So what this TV essentially will do is take any content you're piping into this TV, whether it's 4K content or HD content, or even as I found out this weekend, SD content. I watched Beverly Hills Cop on this TV. (laughs) Oh my God. And and it looked amazing. I mean, it can upscale anything you've got to near 8K quality. And I was sure that I was going to foil this TV by pulling out, you know, the old Eddie Murphy movies. And I mean, it looked great. Like you wouldn't know. I mean, it didn't look like 8K to me, but it looked pretty close to HD or 4K. Of all the movies, <laughs> of all the movies you could have picked, that was in. I like, needed something older. Yes, you just have. It was on ha- Netflix. Okay, so Eddie Murphy, Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, the price. What What are we talking here? I believe the seventy five inch uh, Q nine hundred R that I have is about nine thousand dollars. So you are definitely in early adopter territory where you're going to be some of the, one of the first people to have this TV technology, but you're going to pay for it. But like happened with 4k TV, they were super expensive when they came out. And then I think we're only really maybe four years into 4k technology and the 4k TV. I literally just put in my living room two weeks ago costs about 350 bucks. So the prices definitely come down as this technology gets better and as more people are showing interest in it. Is it kind of dangerous, though? I mean, some would argue, well, I'm going to get this 8K TV now and it's going to be good for eight years. But I found with a lot of these technologies, things change. So, for example, when 4K TVs came out, they didn't have things like HDR, high high dynamic range, which is kind of a key feature now for these TVs to really show off the picture. And so we don't even know what technologies that are going to come around from a TV perspective that this particular $9,000 TV in year four might be sorely missing. I'm thinking if you have $9,000 for a TV, you that's not a concern. You don't care. You're not worried. True. No, that, that TV goes to the kids' room in four years. <laughs> <laughs> if it can fit. Uh, would you ever buy one of these? I guess the price has to come down. I, I would love to have one. Having spent um, just over a month with it now, I mean, I've been watching everything on it. And the the level of detail you can see is just, it's stunning. Like, it's it's like something is happening right in front of you. It's, it's so realistic that it makes movies or TV viewing or really anything, any of that entertainment watching, so much more enjoyable and so much more immersive. I'm probably going to wait on 8K until A, the price comes down and until more content comes out. Uh, I did read, though, that I think they're putting the 2022 Olympics out in 8K. And I do know they've been experimenting with Major League Baseball in 8K. I think a Japanese TV network was doing some of that. So there's stuff that's starting to trickle out. And again, much like 4K, it's going to take some time, but I think we'll eventually see it. 
We're talking with Aaron Lawrence from TechGadgetsCanada.com about 8K. If you thought you're behind because you didn't have a 4K TV yet, you're even more behind now, especially if you have $9,000 and you love Japanese baseball. <laughs> you're good to go. Uh, Aaron, thanks for joining us today. Good luck packing that up. Yeah, truly. I no, truly. I'd love to see a video on you just getting that thing back into the box. I'll work on that for my Instagram feed. When we Take come, care, you too. Thanks. When we come back from the break, more tech to talk here on Get Connected. Stay tuned. You are back with Get Connected. Mike and John here. Time left for the Amazon Alexa skill of the week. What do we got, John? Do you ever wonder about the red planet, Mike? Every night in my dreams, yes. <laughs> Well, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, has a skill called NASA Mars, and you can ask anything you want to know about the red planet. Cool, cool. And so what kind of things would I want to know about the red planet? <laughs> well, you can get an update on the Curiosity robot uh, rover. Well, oh, that thing's still going, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like well past its... So what kind of updates would it give you about that? I'm not oh, sure. I'm alive. <laughs> I found some more rocks. I'm lonely. I'm lonely. <laughs> Help. Can I ever come back? Send astronauts. Yes. Um... You can, you know, it's really good for teachers too, like because they can ask questions that you know their, their students might ask, like you know, why is Mars red? Uh, is that uh, the iron in the rocks? I think you get a gold star. Do I? Or maybe I've been listening to this Alexa skill. <laughs> no, this is kind of cool, and there's so many of these types of uh, skills for the Amazon Alexa. There's literally tens of thousands of them. So I know a lot of people have an Amazon Echo speaker in their home now with the Alexa voice assistant. I think most people probably 99% use it for music. Yeah. Maybe a few people use it for connected home stuff, but it can do so much more. Like, And these skills like this here, NASA Mars, it's amazing, Like, right. especially if you've got kids. Yeah, and it's more than just reading off, reading off the Wikipedia entry. Like, You can actually interact with this and ask specific questions about it, and it can dive deeper and give you a more you know, rich answer than you would get from just the Wikipedia page. Like, are there Martians? Yes. Was there life? You will find out. That's the skill of week, a uh, skill of the week called NASA Mars. Don't forget to visit our webpage. It's really cool. Getconnectedmedia.com. We've got our podcast there of the show and also our sister show, The App Show, which is on uh, Global News Radio, CKNW 980, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. in Vancouver. It goes across the Chorus Radio Network all the way out to Winnipeg. Hey, Winnipeg. Uh, and we've got video podcasts now as well. We are video... Uh, Tape, I'm going to say video taping. <laughs> We're videoing uh, the, the radio. Recording. Yeah, the uh, the shows now. So you can actually see us in all our uh, 360 glory. I want to thank John and AJ for helping out on the program today. We'll see you again next time.